Hello and welcome to part 2 of Let's Play Death Trap Dungeon. Um, during the last part, while I was reading paragraph 257, um, I neglected to note down that I picked up a gold piece and the hollow wooden tube. Um, I put an annotation on part 1 explaining that, but um, um, I just thought I'd explain that again. Um, so on the uh, on the text file here, I've noted down an extra gold piece, um, so now I have three. Um, and I've also noted down that I have a hollow wooden tube. Anyway, um, the next paragraph I was going to read was 239, so let's go to um, 239. And here we go. Um, not much farther down the tunnel, you come to a closed door on your left. Putting your ear to the door, you listen intently but hear nothing. If you wish to open the door, turn to 102. If you wish to keep walking north, turn to 344. Um, we're going to open the door, turn to 102. Okay, you enter a room which is small and completely empty. As soon as you are inside, the door slams shut behind you. Suddenly, a voice booms out of nowhere, shouting... Welcome to Death Trap Dungeon, the ingenious killer labyrinth of my master. Adventurer, I trust you will pay your respects to my master by shouting out his name. Will you shout, Hail Succumbit, or Succumbit is a worm? Um, we're going to say Succumbit is a worm, so go to 251. And here we go. Once again, the mysterious voice calls out, um, only this time, to your great surprise, in a far less threatening tone. Good, my master likes those who show spirit. Take this gift to help you. It will grant you one wish, but only one wish. Or rather, but one wish only. Farewell. A gold ring magically appears out of nowhere and lands at your feet with a gentle tingle. You pick it up and put it on one of your fingers. The door opens and, and you step back into the tunnel to continue north. Turn to 344. Okay, let's note down that we have the gold ring worth one wish. So gold ring, and I'll put in um, brackets, one wish. I think it was a gold ring anyway. Yep. Okay, so we're going to head north. Uh, turn to 344. Here we go. Um, the tunnel twists and turns but keeps steadily north. Ahead you see a thin shaft of blue light streaming down from the ceiling to the floor. It sparkles and shimmers and you can see images of laughing faces in the light. If you wish to walk through the light, turn to 229. If you would rather walk around the light, turn to 107. Okay. Um... We are going to walk through the light. Um, so we're going to turn to 229. Here we go. As soon as your head goes under the blue light, you hear the sound of muffled voices. The faces are no longer laughing, but have changed their expressions to one of despair and anguish. A young girl's sad face hovers in, in front of you, and she begins to whisper a poem. Transfixed, you listen intently, believing uh, that she has a special message for you as she recites. When corridor doth water meet, do not make a quick retreat. Take a breath and jump deep in, if your trial you hope to win. Memorising the spirit girl's poem, you step through the shaft of light and quickly head on north. Turn to 107. Okay, so what was the... Um uh, what was the gist of this poem? When corridor doth water meet, do not make a quick retreat. Uh, take a breath and jump deep in if your trial if your trial you hope to win. Okay, so pretty much it's just sort of um, don't retreat from water and um, jump in. So I'll write that. So make a note here. Um, don't retreat from water. I don't know why I've put loads of slashes there. That's it. Um, jump straight 
in. There we go. Okay. Okay, so uh, returning to 107. Okay, you come to an arched doorway set in the right hand wall of the tunnel. Uh, the heavy stone door is closed, but there is an iron latch and a round handle. If you wish to try the door, turn to 168. If instead you wish to continue along the tunnel, turn to 267. Okay, and we're going to continue along the tunnel, so turn to 267. Let's just search for the last paragraph, actually, because I didn't show you the picture. One down here, wasn't it? There it is. Yeah, uh, that was the picture of the uh, of the um, of the faces in the blue light. It looks sort of modern, if you ask me. Anyway, so we're turning to two hundred and sixty-seven. Okay, um, the tunnel ends shortly at a junction. Looking left and right, you see a narrow passage disappearing into the dim distance. If you wish to head west, turn to 352. If you wish to go east, turn to 68. Okay, we're going to go east, so turn to 68. Here we go. You walk down the passage and soon find yourself standing at the edge of a deep dark pit. The passage continues east on the other side of the pit. You think you could probably jump over the pit, but you are not sure. There is a rope hanging down from the ceiling over the centre of the pit. Will you throw your shield over the pit and jump after it? Jump over the pit carrying all your possessions? Or reach for the rope with your sword to enable you to swing across the pit? Okay, we're going to jump over the pit and we're going to carry all of our possessions. So, we are going to turn to paragraph 30. Taking a step forward, you leap towards the far edge of the pit. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 160. If you are unlucky, turn to 319. Okay, so we need to test our luck. What's our luck score at the moment? 11. Okay, so we need a score, well, we need a dice roll, rather. Um, two dice of 11 or less. So, 10. We just made it. Okay, I'll just get rid of the buzzing. There we go. So we have to put our uh, luck score down to 10. Because we've used a luck point, And we were lucky, so we're turning to 160. Uh, your armor, uh, your armor and sword weigh you down, but you just manage to land safely on the far edge of the pit. You waste no time and head east. Turn to 237. That was painless. All right, here we go. 237. Uh, the tunnel makes a sudden left turn and continues north for as far as you can see. Uh, you soon arrive at a closed wooden door in the left-hand wall. If you wish to open the door, turn to 12. If you'd rather keep going north, turn to 100. Okay, we are going to open the door. So turn to 12. Okay, um, I think that picture applies to this, so I'll have a look at that. Uh, um, I will have a look at that in a second. Now, the door opens into a large candlelit room filled with the most extraordinarily lifelike statues of knights and warriors. A white-haired old man dressed in tattered rags suddenly jumps out from behind one of the statues and starts to giggle. Though he looks like a fool, the sparkle in his eyes makes you think there is more to him than is apparent. In a high-pitched voice, he says, Oh good, another stone for my garden. I'm glad you have come to join your friends. Now... I'm a fair man, and so I'll, I'll ask you a question. If you answer correctly, I'll let you go free, but if your answer is wrong, I'll turn you to stone. He starts to chuckle again, obviously pleased with your arrival. Will you wait for his question? Turn to 382. 
Attack him with your sword, turn to 195, or make a run for the door, turn to 250. He's obviously very powerful, so attacking him or running away from him is clearly a bad idea. Um, so we're going to wait for his question. So turn to 382. However, I'll just look at the picture, if that picture is of him. Yep, yeah, there he is. There's his face and there's the, the statues. Anyway, so we're turning to 382 and waiting for his question. Okie dokie. Okay, the old man points at one of the statues and you recognise it immediately. It is the knight who started the trial of champions, the agonised look on his face locked in stone for eternity. The old man smiles, saying, This man weighs a hundred pounds plus half his weight. How much does he weigh? What will you answer? Um, will we answer 100 pounds, turn to 144, 150 pounds, turn to 227, um, or 200 pounds, turn to 391? Okay, so you have to work this, this is all like a logical sort of thing. He weighs 100 pounds plus half his weight. So if you have to think about it, so a hundred pounds, he definitely weighs a hundred pounds plus something, so it can't be a hundred pounds because he already weighs a hundred pounds and plus half his weight. Um, if he weighs a hundred and fifty pounds, that means a half his weight would be seventy five pounds. So, um, and that isn't an option here, so one hundred and fifty pounds would be a um, 100 pounds would be 175 pounds overall. However, the only one that makes sense is 200 pounds because he weighs 100 pounds plus half his weight, which is another 100 pounds. So he weighs 200 pounds um, uh, because half his weight is 100 pounds plus 100 pounds is 200 pounds. That's the only one that makes logical sense. So the answer can only be um, 200 pounds, which is 14 stone four. Um, so we're turning to 391. Here we go. Still smiling, the old man looks at you and says, Well done, stranger. You have answered correctly. I wish you good fortune during the rest of the trial of champions. And to this end, I shall increase your powers. He then mutters a few more unintelligible words, and you feel a, and, and you feel a powerful surge soar through your body. Add one to each of your skill, stamina, and luck scores. You bid the old man farewell and leave his room to con uh, to continue north along the passage. Turn to 100. Okay, so we can add one to each of your skill, stamina, and luck scores. It doesn't say initial skill, stamina, or luck, so it just means uh, uh, normal. So we're back to 18 for stamina, and we're back to 11 for luck. Okay, so that's that. Lovely jubbly. Um... So now we're turning to 100. Let's go. Only a few metres further down the passage, you see another closed door. Oh, um, oh, I'll just say, uh, the previous uh, paragraph had, uh, or rather the paragraph before last, had sort of imperial measurements, like um, pounds, and now it's using metres. You know, it, it should be consistent. Either use kilos and metres, or use... Um, pounds and yards yeah, it's inconsistent anyway only a few meters further down the passage you see another closed door in the left hand wall the letter X is scratched into its center panel putting your ear to the door you listen intently but can hear nothing if you wish to open the door turn to 87 if you would rather keep walking north turn to 217 we're going to open the door so turn to 87 The door opens into a large room. Turn to 381. I think that's one of those small paragraphs that's just done to increase the number of paragraphs up to 100, um, or rather up to 400, because they could easily have put that onto the next one. Uh, 381. Okay, you look round the room and see nothing of interest apart from an alcove in the west wall and a stone chair in the middle of the room. Sitting in the chair is the skeleton of an armed warrior, possibly a contestant from years gone by. Uh, the skeletal f 
Uh, the skeletal fingers of its right hand are gripped round a piece of parchment. If you wish to take the parchment from the skeleton, turn to 331. If you would rather walk over to the alcove, turn to, turn to 128. Okay, we're going to take the parchment, so 331. Touching the parchment has precisely the effect you had feared. The skeleton lurches forward and, rising from its chair in, in a series of jerky movements, raises its sword to strike you. Lunging sideways, you draw your sword to defend yourself. Okay, we're going to fight a skeleton warrior. Skill 8, stamina 6. Okay, so we need to write skeleton warrior here. He has a very similar name to my own, or rather my YouTube uh, name. Anyway, was it Skeleton or Skeletal? I can't remember now. Skeleton. Skeleton Warrior. Skill 8, Stamina 6. So skill 8, and Stamina... Whoops. 6. Okay, let's do this. Um, need a dice program. My skill is 10, so, and he goes first, of course. Uh, two dice. Okay, he gets a 4, so he gets 12 overall, and I get an 11, which is 21. So, um, he gets uh, 20, uh, rather 12 to 21, that's it. 12 to 21. So, he loses the first one. And then we, he goes down to 4. And again, he gets 11, which is 19. And I get 7, which is 17. So 19 to 17. He wins that one. And we have to be fair. So he takes off 2 points of stamina, so I'm down to 16. Okay, he gets a 6, that's 14. I get a 5. That's 15, so I just win that one. That was close, so 14 to 15. Oops, 16. Oops. Accidentally put 16 there. Okay, so just one more hit, and he's mine. Okay, he gets a 7, that's 15. I get a 4, that's 14, so I lose this time. So 15 to 14. This skeleton's a, a tenacious little git. All right, so... I have to go down to 14 stamina. I hope I can make this up somehow. Okay, so next one. He gets a 4, that's 12. I get a 6, that's 16. So 12 to 16, and I win at last. He goes down to naught, and that's that. Just get rid of the buzzing. There we go. And that's the end of Skeleton Warrior. If you win, turn to 71. Once again, you reach for the parchment, only this time it is lying amidst a pile of broken bones. Unfolding it, you see a map of a room with a drawing of a hideous creature inside it. Beneath the monster is a rhyme which reads, Should you meet the manticore, of its tail beware. Shield yourself against the spikes flying through the air. You fold up the piece of parchment and put it in your backpack. Repeating the rhyme over and over to yourself, you walk across to the alcove. Turn to 128. Okay, I'll just put manticore parchment for that, I think. Manticore parchment. There we go. Okay, so um, we're now going to go to the alcove, so turn to 128. At the back of the alcove are some steps leading down into a cellar. Cobwebs brush your face as you descend. The cellar ceiling is quite low, and the floor is strewn with rubbish and debris. In the middle of the wall opposite to you is an archway which leads into another crystal-lit tunnel. There are large mushrooms growing on the rubbish to your right. If you wish to step through the archway, turn to 35. If you wish to stop to eat some of the mushrooms, turn to 233. Uh, it's never a good idea to eat mushrooms unless you know what you're doing. Um, 
So we're going to step through the archway and ignore the mushrooms. Turn to 35. Uh, the tunnel continues west for several hundred metres, finally ending at some steps leading up to a closed trap door. You climb the steps slowly, hearing muffled voices above you. In the dim light, you can see that the trap door is not locked. If you wish to knock on the trap door, turn to 333. If you wish to burst through the trap door with your sword drawn, turn to 124. Okay, we're going to burst through the trap door. Um, with our sword drawn, so it turns 124. Um, you throw the trap door open and run up the steps into a bright lantern lit room. Two goblins are sharpening their short swords on a stone set in the middle of the floor. You catch them momentarily off guard, but they quickly recover and both rush forward to attack you. Okay, this is uh, a bit complicated. Both goblins will have a separate attack on you in each attack round, but you must choose which of the two you will fight. Attack your chosen goblin as in a normal battle. Against the other, you must throw for your attack strength in a, in a normal way. Uh, but if your attack strength is greater, you will not wound it. You must count this as though you have defended yourself against its blow. However, if its attack strength is greater, it will have wounded you in a normal way. If you win, turn to 81. So you have to fight them at the same time. Uh, one after the other. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So first goblin, second goblin. I'll have to, this would be a bit weird, but okay. First goblin. What is it? Five, four, and five, five. Okay. Five, four, and five. Whoops. Five five. Okay, that's second goblin. Alright, okay, let's do this. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go for the first goblin first, then the second one. I'll have to just, you know, I'm not gonna um, make it more complicated than it is. Uh, my skill is still uh, ten, so this should be a doddle really. Uh, they shouldn't wound me, in theory. Okay, so he goes. The well, first goblin goes first. He gets an eleven. That's not good, is it? He, that's uh, sixteen for him. I get a 4, that's 14, brilliant, so that's one wounding, um, so that's two points off my stamina, brilliant. Okay, next one is also five, so he gets a five, that's ten, I get eight, that's, uh, so I've just, I've just defended against that effectively. Um, so he got eleven, which was uh, sixteen, and I got fourteen. Next one got uh, a five, so that's ten, and I got a an eight, eight, that's eighteen. So, but that just counts as me defending myself, apparently. So I don't get to take a hit off him because I chose to attack the first goblin. Okay, so I haven't done any damage at all. So let's continue. Okay, first goblin, he gets a three, that's eight. So I'm guaranteed to win. Eight against eighteen. So. Definitely uh, won that one. So he goes down to two. Then I have to do it for the second goblin. So he gets uh, a, tw uh, a 12. That's 17. <sighs> okay. Uh, yeah, 17 against 7. 17. Okay, that's fair enough. 17 and 17. So uh, we don't wound. I mean, it doesn't matter that I, yeah, that I, uh, that I didn't hit him because I wouldn't have hit him anyway because it's just sort of defending myself. Okay, so first goblin again. He gets a 6, that's uh, 11. I get 10, that's 20. So 11 to 20, so that's the first goblin dead. Um, so he's down to naught. Then, as he's dead now... Well, no, because it's the same attack round. It's only If I win this, it only counts as defending myself, So because it's the same attack round. He gets a 7, that's 12. I get 10. So 20, uh, 12 to 20. So I just defend myself. Okay, so now we're fighting the the second goblin, and he needs three hits really. Okay, so eleven, that's uh, sixteen. I get twelve, that's twenty-two. So sixteen to twenty-two. So I win that. So he goes down to three stamina. Okay, next he gets an eleven, that's uh, sixteen. 
I get uh, I get a seven. That's uh, seventeen. So sixteen to seventeen. I just win that. That was uh, too close for comfort. So he goes down to one stamina. Okay. Um, he gets a three. That's eight. I'm guaranteed to win, and I get eighteen. So eight to eighteen. Um, because I got uh, an 8, and 8 plus 10 is 18, just in case you were forgetting what this all means. So I win that, he gets 3 plus 5, I get 8 plus 10, so 8 to 18. And that's both the goblins dead, so they only managed to get one hit off on me, but my stamina's down to 12 now, which is a bit dodgy. Yep, let's go down to yep, get rid of the buzzing, because that dice program makes a funny buzzing for some reason. Okay, if you win, turn to 81. I did win, so 81. Wasn't a difficult battle really. I just got unlucky with the first, uh, with the first dice roll. Okay, the only furniture in the goblins' room is a table. Um, is a table, two chairs, and a cupboard on the wall. Uh, there are two closed doors, one in the west wall and the other in the north wall. Will you open the cupboard, turn to 307? Open the west door, turn to 263? Or open the north door, turn to 136? Okay, we're going to um we're going to open the north door, so yeah, we're going to go north, so um yeah, open the north door hundred and thirty six Now the door opens into another tunnel which rises gently into the distance after walking uphill for a while. The tunnel levels out. And you soon arrive at a door in the right-hand wall, um, to which a withered hand is nailed. If you wish to open the door, turn to 210. If you would rather continue north, turn to 78. We're going to continue north, I don't trust that hand. Turn to 78. Here we go. Uh, there is an open pipe in the right-hand wall, about a metre in diameter. It is too dark to see far down it. You shout into it and hear your voice echoing down the iron pipe until eventually the sound fades away. If you wish to crawl down the pipe, turn to uh, turn to 301. If you would rather continue north, turn to 142. We're going to crawl down the pipe, so turn to 301. The pipe is wet and slimy, but you crawl on into the dank darkness, slithering and sliding as you go. Suddenly, your hand touches something hard and square, which feels as if it is made of wood. It rattles as you shake it, and you decide you must be holding a box. If you wish to crawl back out of the pipe and examine your find, turn to 162. If you'd rather press on further down the pipe, taking the box with you to examine later, turn to 4. We're going to crawl back out of the pipe. Um, so, yeah, we're going to turn to 162. We're going to examine the box now. 162. Uh, removing the box lid by the light of the tunnel, you find an iron key and a large gem. It is a sapphire. Add one luck point. Placing the items carefully in your backpack. You set off north once again. Turn to 142. Okay, iron key and a sapphire and luck point. So let's put the luck point on first. So we're back to 12 luck. That's nice. Um, and we have iron key and a sapphire. I think it's double P, isn't it? Yeah. Double P. 142. Here we go. There is a new branch in the tunnel on your left, and ahead you see two bodies lying on the floor. You stop and peer down the new tunnel, but seeing no doors or creatures, you decide against walking down. Uh, you, do, you decide against walking down it. With your sword drawn, you walk over to where the bodies lie. Turn to 358. Here we go. Okay. Uh, you lose your balance and tumble headlong to the floor. Lose two stamina points. You decide against trying to climb the. Oh, whoops! I've done the wrong one. That's not the idle. I'm doing the. 
I'm doing the wrong one. Sorry about this. I've I've gone to the wrong to the wrong paragraph. I beg your pardon. Where was I? I can't remember where I was. Um, fiddle dee dee. Can never remember where I was. Bear with me. Okay, here's the pipe again. Cool down the pipe, yeah, 301. Yep, 162. Yep, went to 162. 142. Oh, 338. Yeah, the writing, uh, the scan here of the book is, is slightly blurry. I read that as 358, it's 338. I apologise about that. Uh, 338. Uh, the bodies are those of two orc guards. At least one of your rivals in the trial of champions must still be ahead of you. A quick search of the bodies produces nothing apart from a necklace of teeth hanging around the neck of one of the orcs. If you, if you wish to wear the necklace yourself, turn to 123. If you would rather set off north without the necklace, turn to 282. Okay. We're going to wear the necklace. So 123. The necklace is an amulet of strength. Add one skill point and one stamina point and continue your quest north. Turn to 282. I'll just put that in. So necklace of teeth. Uh, how a necklace of teeth is an amulet of strength, I'll never know. Okay, so up to 13 stamina, and we can't put our skill up any higher because it's at maximum. Okay, so turn to 282. Uh, the tunnel soon ends at a junction. Standing there alone and wondering which way to go is... Um, is one of your rivals. It is one of the barbarians. You call out to him, but at first he does not answer. He merely stares at you coldly, his hands firmly gripping his axe. You walk up to him and ask which way he is heading. He grunts his reply, saying that he is going west, and you may go with him if you wish. If you would like to head west with the barbarian, turn to 22. If you would rather decline his offer and head east alone, turn to 388. Okay. We're going to accept the Barbarian's offer and go uh, west with the Barbarian. So turn to 22. And there is the Barbarian himself. Looks like he's been uh, he's, he's been working out a bit. So turn to 22. Here we go. Although you are slightly uneasy in each other's company, Knowing that there can only be one winner in the Trial of Champions, you are both content to share in the benefits of a temporary alliance. You begin to tell each other of your exploits so far, of the monsters and traps encountered and the dangers overcome. Walking along, you soon come to the edge of a wide pit. It is too deep and dark to see the bottom. The barbarian offers to lower you to the bottom with his rope, saying he has a torch which he can light for you to use. Will you accept the barbarian's offer? Offer to lower him down if he is so eager to investigate the pit. Or suggest that you both jump over the pit instead. Okay. Um, we're going to go with the barbarian and accept his offer again at the next offer. Um, and go to 63. So we're going to accept the Barbarian's offer again, 63. Uh, you tie the rope around your waist and take hold of the lighted torch given to you by Throm, as your Barbarian ally calls himself. Taking hold of the slack rope, Throm lowers you slowly over the edge of the pit and down into the dark depths below. You can see by the light of the torch that the sides of the pit are extremely smooth, you drop about 20 metres before hitting the bottom of the pit. There you see another tunnel heading north, and you call up to Throm and tell him of your discovery. 
He calls back, saying that he is going to tie the rope around a protruding rock on the edge of the pit and will come down and join you. You hear him climbing down and soon you are together again. Throm retrieves his rope by shaking it off the rock and you set off north along the new tunnel. 10 to 194. On a stone ledge in the tunnel uh, on the tu on a stone ledge in the tunnel wall, you see two dusty leather-bound books. Throm grunts his contempt for the written word, urging you to leave the books and hurry on. Will you open the red leather book, open the black leather book, or continue north along the tunnel? We're going to open the black leather book, so turn to 138. The book's pages are sealed together, but a small hole has been cut out in the middle of them just large enough to hold a small corked bottle containing a clear liquid. You show it to Throm, who holds up his hand, indicating that he does not want you to come anywhere near him with it. His distrust, his distrust of things unknown is strongly evident. Will you drink the liquid? Turn to 397. Rub the liquid into your wounds? Turn to 75. Open the red book, if you have not done so already? Turn to 52. Or leave the bottle and book to continue north with Throm? Turn to 369. Okay, we're going to drink the liquid. So, 397. Now, the liquid is a magical potion which will enable you to detect hidden traps. Add two luck points. If you have not done so already, you may open the red book, turn to 52. Otherwise, you must continue north with Throm, turn to 369. Okay, um trap detecting liquid I'll write that in or type that in rather don't need the luck points I'm already on maximum so that's that um, and now we're going to open the red book so turn to 52 as you open the book it begins to disintegrate and the pages turn to dust in your hands you manage to keep a few fragments and read the handwritten script. The book appears to be about monsters, and from what you can make out, it contains a full description of a monster called the Blood Beast. It is a horrific bloated creature with tough, spiny skin and facial blisters which burst open to become mock eyes, evolved to hide the Blood Beast's only weak spot, its real eyes. Blood Beasts usually dwell in pools of fetid slime which give off a poisonous gas. This gas is so strong that it can easily knock people unconscious. The blood beast, although too bulbous to haul itself out of its slime pool, has a long and vicious tongue which it wraps around its, victim, its victims before it drags them into its pool. As the victim's flesh starts to decompose in the vile slime, the blood beast will feed from it. You tell Throm about the grotesque blood beast, but he merely shrugs his shoulders and tells you to get going. If you have not done so already, you may open the black book, turn to, turn to 138. Otherwise, you must continue north with Throm, turn to 369. Okay, so we know about the blood beast and its eyes, so I'll just write that in. Um, I'll put that in the messages, in the notes bit, rather. Blood beast. Uh, has the blood beast's weak point points are its eyes there we go and that is the end of part two so in the next part i will be um continuing north with throm going to 369 and uh yeah, so that's the end of part two. Again, I apologise for two things. One, not noting down that I had the uh, that I picked up the hollow wooden tube and the and the gold piece in the last part on paragraph 257. Don't know why I didn't note it down, but I noted it down as soon as I finished the video. And I put I put one of those YouTube annotation things. Um, uh, it lasts for about 30 seconds while I'm reading paragraph 200. Uh, 257 that, that states that I've, you know, I didn't write it down and I've noted it down now, so I am aware of it, in case people watch it and uh, and are screaming at the screen and going, why haven't you noted down the gold piece and Hollywood and tube? I have done, so don't worry. 
Um, and I do apologise about losing my place going to paragraph 358 instead of paragraph 338. Uh, that, that happens sometimes if you're not paying attention, especially if the paragraph is blurry. The, the person who scanned the book uh, scanned it a bit weirdly, and it's a bit blurry on that bit. But there's no excuse. It easily says 338. Uh, you know, but uh, I thought I'd mention it nonetheless. Okay. Um, yeah. So in the next part, I'll be continuing onwards with Throm. There's at least I'd say, I possibly might be able to do this in one more video. Depends how many battles there are. Um, if there are loads of battles, there's no way I can get this done in one more video. Otherwise, it'll be two videos. So it'll be either one or two videos. I'll have this done. So um, thank you for watching. I'll just note down the next paragraph. Uh, uh, to which paragraph I'm going? 369. So next paragraph is 369. I'll just put it after this one just in case I need that one again. I don't know why, but you know, you never know. Okay, so next paragraph is 369. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.